here in the middle. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, yeah, a lot of people fell outside. Uh, so yeah, data quality. Uh, if you look at the challenge board, it comes up a lot. I mean, at least five times. People worried about, concerned about the quality of the data they're using to form uh, campaigns. What are you guys seeing on this front? Is this a concern for you? Just how accurate the stuff that you're using is? Yeah, it's absolutely a concern. I mean, we're seeing this more pervasively, and as, as by looking at the board too, it seems like this is a very much yeah. a very live and real kind of an issue that is pretty pervasive in the industry. So, um, one of the things that we're doing specifically is we're doing a couple different things. One, we're interrogating the companies to get a deep understanding of exactly how they interpret their quality of data, how often they refresh it, how they're getting it, uh, how does that relate to other companies that we commonly use, and, and use a much more finite list of data providers. Uh, to make sure that we're kind of mitigating any, any quality issues that that's possible. And then we're actually building our own internal technology uh, to be able to ingest all this data. Uh, there's a whole artificial intelligence layer that kind of underlines uh, what we're doing mm -hmm. and starts to interpret the relative value of some of this third party data that we're augmenting from other, uh, other sources like the client's data with first party data and, and second party data. I mean, directionally, is this, because this is some uh, the concerns about data quality, third party data quality, have been around for, for years now. Directionally, sure. where is this, I mean, is this improving at all? Or is, is, is this stuff getting cleaned up? Well, I don't think it's, it's necessarily been on everybody's mind. And, yeah. and I think it's now starting to come to the forefront. And it's, it's a, certainly with much more being invested in programmatic. Now that everybody's taking a look at that, all right, so let's take a look at the data. So we took a look at the inventory and how we bought that. Now we say, so what's feeding that? Right. Uh, and I think that's putting a, a bright spotlight much more so than it ever has before. And I think you're probably gonna read a lot more about it in, in the coming months. Right. See, the thing to think about is like, there is absolutely no third party validation that the, the data is accurate. And even as an agency, what we spend a tremendous amount of time validating that the data is what it purports to be, and then verifying that it has the impact that you, know, you expect to have. But when you look at validating data quality, not only does the quality of data vary dramatically from one data provider to another, even within one data provider, it varies dramatically from period to period as the inventory of their data changes, but also as the scale with which you look to, to deploy it. So it is something that requires diligent, uh, 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 it requires constant, very, very vigilant um, monitoring of the data quality to make sure that you're always on top of it and make sure that you scale back as that quality starts to, to degrade. Right. Do you have any horror yeah. stories? Like you looked at stuff after the campaign, and you're like, wait, you know, why are half of, you know. Yeah. For, fortunately, no, up? because we don't look at it after the campaign. We actually Good. spend a yeah. tremendous amount of time, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. validating the data up front. So we'll right. test the data with our, our new partners before we ever launch it at full scale within a campaign. As I said, test it to make sure first that it is what it purports to be and then we roll it out um, in small scale with campaigns to see does it have the desired impact before we start rolling out a bigger scale. Yeah. But always still taking those dipstick tests to make sure that it is what we think it is. Got it, got it. Let's talk about um, clients, because obviously one way to you know, reduce the reliance on third party is to get the first party to be better about collecting it. I mean, what, what challenges are you seeing there in, in, in getting more interest from, from clients to be collecting and organizing their, their, their own data better. Yeah, when we talk about data quality, I always say like the most valuable data is first party data. Right. Clients tell them, you know, what data should we be using? Well, you should first be using your own data and using that to the best of your abilities. Uh, once mm -hmm. we have exhausted the possibility of your own data, we then supplement with a whole bunch of third party data to, you know, make, uh, make it more impactful. Um, the problem that we're having with, with clients uh, across the industry is, is kind of twofold. There are, there are some clients that just have kind of trepidation and, and fear, and, and a lot of times it's because of the industry that they're operating in. So if you think about like finance companies or healthcare companies, there's a tremendous amount of regulation around PII, and there's a tremendous amount of, of just unease within their legal departments because they don't quite understand what we're doing. Um, the other side of the coins might be uh, a bit controversial and, and hard to hear for clients, but it's really, it's, it's a lack of motivation on their part to uh, put in the, the time and, and money to invest in the, the technologies that are going to be required in order to, to collect, standardize, and make this data portable so that it can be used by the agencies. Right. Brian, you seeing similar, similar things? Yeah, I would agree a lot with, with what Michael said. I think we're seeing some very similar issues on our side. I think there is this hesitancy to say, 
Uh, is there sensitivity in relation to the data to an agency to be able to use that and ingest that to be able, be able to market out layer second and third party data over it? Um, I think there's also some barriers from, uh, from an infrastructure standpoint. So generally the folks that have access to, to be able to cookie and identify and get a access to website and uh, site-side analytics, uh, generally a different organization. Right. Um, in some instances with Enrichment, specifically we, we kind of do it end-to-end. -end. So not that we produce the website, but we actually place the media as well. We literally have to go down the hall and say, you know, we need to, to pixel certain pages, we need to get access to this data. It's all within the family, the, you know, the client doesn't become the arbiter of, of getting access to, to individuals, so I think that becomes a much more seamless Are you seeing any skittishness about the idea of sharing what they have, or are they trying to just, even if they have it and they can share it, they're just reluctant to share it with even you? Yeah, as I, I, I think there's the, this notion of what happens to the data. Right. So is anybody gonna take it, is, especially if you start to uh, place that in, uh, on publisher sites, or are they're gonna start to somehow capture that, right. use it for, for bad, not for good, uh, and, and use that ag essentially against them, right? right? Instead of helping us to facilitate a much more meaningful relationship with consumers. Right, right. I wanna also talk about publishers, because there, there are a bunch here. Um, do, you see, do you think that publishers are doing enough to leverage the data that they have from the first party standpoint? I mean, is there stuff that they should be doing around, around that that they're not? I think it kind of spans a, a spectrum, as you probably would expect, right? Sure. I mean, you certainly have one by OL that I think has been extraordinarily progressive. I think Yahoo's had data for years, probably not leveraging to the best capability that they, they can, mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of comes in fits and spurts. Uh, but you're seeing it more, more commonly. I think there needs to be an acceleration of using some of that, mm -hmm. some of that data to be able to augment, because I think it is ine inevitably much more reliable or, or should be more reliable than what we're seeing sure. on a third party basis. Yeah. The, the thing, thing about publisher data is that publishers have fantastic data. They have data that rivals that of Google and Facebook. The, mm -hmm. the challenge with publisher data is that it's, its scale is limited, right? And the, the data within one publisher is in a different format and location than data within another publisher. So it makes it very, very challenging to think about how they can be competitive against the scale of you know, the behemoths. But if you think about what's happening with publisher alliances and how right. they're pooling those data and they're standardizing it and they're making it um, scalable, they actually are becoming much, much more competitive. So I, I see the publisher alliance as being a huge benefit for publishers going forward. Right, right. Yeah, because you, you, have, you have it, but the question is, do you have enough of it, right? And it, it's always a question of, you know, when you think about the, the advantages that Google and Facebook have is they have that scale, they have the ability to, to, to measure across devices, which is what I want to ask about now. How, how big of an issue is that still? The challenge board, the question of getting, figuring out, you know, someone moves from work computer to home computer to home, a personal phone to tablet to, I mean, where are we on that? Well, I mean, I think we're still a little ways off, yeah. for sure. Uh, the fact that every, you know, the, the fact that everybody acknowledges that that's a problem, I think, has gotten people to right. try to figure out whatever the solution is going to be. Uh, I think we, we need to get to, uh, kind of that notion of a single user uh, or a single user ID. Mm -hmm. The question is, who owns that? Is it the client who owns it? Is it the agency who arbitrates that? Right. Um, how, do, how does that work? So I think that becomes a, a separate hurdle. But I think once we start to do that, yes, it will increase scale. But we're talking about this. It's about quality, not necessarily about quality. quantity. And it's mm -hmm. about having that continuous relationship with the consumer. And if, if, if it's done well and, and done uh, in, an, in an appropriate manner, you know, you've, you've got a cadence and, and you're creatively messaging to the right way. Uh, the question is, you need an overabundance of scale to be able to facilitate that, mm -hmm. or is it really about the quality of the interactions that you are able to get at one particular moment in time? Right. Yeah. So that, that becomes a question, right? Where are we just generally on the, on the big platforms? Are you getting enough from them on the data side? I, I don't think you could have a, it's not about getting enough data, it's enough mm -hmm. of the right data. And stuff that you could, you know, sleep at night knowing that this is this is the good stuff that I want, mm -hmm. not a whole bunch of crap. And you know, I've seen figures ranging from 60% accuracy down to 20% accuracy. I mean, it's a broad <laughs> spectrum, but I think everybody agrees. And again, back to the board, is that there's a there's a big disparity of of stuff that's just not simply reliable information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. We're talking about we have a whole bunch of different platforms and different device types, different publishers, and data sets 
sitting in all these different places in different formats. You have to pull from different APIs. Right. It creates a tremendous amount of complexity. Each, even if each individual platform is giving you the right data, the highest quality data, and they're giving it to you very easily, you still have to pull that all together somehow. You have to put it into one centralized place. You have to standardize it before you can actually do any of the interesting things you want to do, either in the programmatic media or with your advanced analytics or even with something as basic as reporting. Right, and that's my next question because now you have all these sources across, you know, all reporting different ways and what they think are important. Now you have the challenge of, you know, being on the analytics side, figuring out what's actually important, how to standardize it, right? right. I mean, is this an issue at Razorfish? Well, I think it's an industry issue, yeah, industry. Uh, which, which is part of the reason why we're trying to challenge that by building a technology infrastructure to be able to in, ingest all that data, right. kind of normalize it so it can be used with consistency across the board, and then be able to, to message out to the appropriate platforms based on what the, the client's objectives are. All right, great. Well, we have a few minutes for questions, if anyone has any. I don't see any hands. No, no? We got no, one, we got one here. over here. Yeah, so uh, first we, we test the, the data streams themselves to, to look at the, um, the reliability of the streams of data because it's going to vary if you look across um, the different platforms you're going to be collecting the data from. So uh, we start off testing the streams of data. Then, depending upon what type of data we're collecting, say we're collecting um, uh, attitudinal data, we'll actually then go out and survey uh, people. We'll target the, the, the cookies that the data is associated with and survey them and see do they exhibit the attitudes that the, the data purports that they do. And so we do that at a large enough scale, then you can validate whether or not the data is accurate. And then after that, we continue to test uh, to see that when we deploy that data, does it have the desired impact? So we'll, we'll separate um, one of the targets and we'll just randomly split them either by cookies or device IDs and say these people are going to be optimizing towards that data, these people will be doing everything as usual without doing that, and then measuring the impact of both of them and seeing does it have the desired impact. So it's like three stages of testing. Anyone else? Hi there. Uh, question about publisher first party data. How are you using it as a strategy? And then are you activating it through private marketplace deals as well? Uh, yeah, so the, the, so the answer to that is, what was the second part of your question? So the, the private marketplaces are the best way to be able to execute that, that we've been able to find. Um, because we do have access to very discrete pools of inventory. We are leveraging the data pools uh, in, in a variety of different ways, but but that seems to be much much more reliable. And then again, we will cross reference that with other data streams, both third and first party, to kind of validate is the inventory pools that we're seeing consistent with with, with the inventory from the publisher saying it, it is, and and then we get a pretty pretty good picture of of what we're dealing with. All right, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you both. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stage right.